Okay, I'm going to run a, um, maybe I'll call this segment quick tips or something like that. I just want to run through a couple of common uh, scenarios that we get with, uh, with forks. So particularly the fork steerer, how the, uh, and how the compression plug plays a role in preventing damage to that sort of critical area. I mean, remember the stem, the way it's attached to the fork determines your control of the bicycle. So if that junction fails, you will lose control of the bicycle and there's a good chance you will crash. So it is a, it's a, a, a critical area from, uh, from a safety point of view. So it's really important that uh, that, that area is, uh, is is sound. So if there's if it's compromised, you can have a serious serious uh, accident, um, be badly hurt, or even even possibly get killed. So you know it's not to be taken lightly. So this is serious. Um, so what we've got um, typical. I'll show you. We've got a fork here, and it's been over tightened. You can see the area marked in yellow. There's a crack and a delamination. So you can actually see the imprint from the stem a little bit. And um, yeah, so that was clearly over tightened. I'll show you one of the reasons a bit later on why the compression plug, um, how, how that unfolded and why it, it wasn't supported the way it should have been. So with the compression plugs, there's... Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways people do it. So Cervelo gets you to bond a tube in, in, inside the steer, an aluminium tube, and then use a star nut inside there. So that gives you the extra wall thickness where, um, where the stem's going to be. So that sleeve is usually quite long and, um, and then bonded in. So you need to mix up the adhesive, smear it in. So you can have mixed results with the adhesive on that. A common, um, a common one compression plug is, um, is this one here. So it's quite short, so it only really supports the stem at the top. Um, it doesn't support further down. So also it's got a, a, a big gap, this one here. So yeah, probably not ideal. I mean, your stem is typically 40 millimeters long and, and that's clearly nowhere near that length. Then you have um, this type, which is of a fixed diameter, and then an expander wedge um, at, the, at the bottom end. So again, it's probably a little bit short. However, this top end up here, if, that isn't, if that's not matched to the internal thickness, um, or the internal diameter of your steerer tube, then that isn't gonna provide any support. Another variation is slightly longer, so that's a better approach. You've got, you've got longer support, um, but again, if that diameter doesn't match the internal diameter of your steerer, then it's not really supporting as much. This type is, um, is quite good. It's got a, a thick wall segmented pieces. Um, it expands over the whole, whole uh, size. Um, cater for a range of different uh, internal diameters. People probably shy away from it because it is a bit heavier than, uh, than others. Um, however, that's a good thing in the support that it provides. So, you know, then we go to the sort of the really lightweight ones. And so this is the Cannondale one. And if we go back to the Cannondale fork, you can see the position of it where that crack is, is basically just below that, this little piece. So the only thing supporting are these, two, are these two little faces here. So it's a very much a concentrated load, which we all know carbon's not very good at, at dealing with. These little flutes here, again, unless they match the wall thickness perfectly, they're gonna do absolutely nothing to the support. So, um, my suggestion is if you have one of these, is to throw it away. The other common type is, uh, is this one, where, again, it's got an expander sort of quite down low, and then you preload with, um, with this cap. Again, if that diameter doesn't match your fork, it's doing nothing. 
So again, if you've got one of these, throw it away. The, um, on the Giants, they have a, their overdrive steerer diameter, which is a, a larger diameter. So they run, they run this setup where it's got a, a thin wall aluminium sleeve and then an expander on the inside. Um, the length of it is good. However, having, having it flute down um, and be a smaller diameter in the middle is doing, it's not adding any support at all. So um, if they would have continued that across the full length, then that would have pro provided much more support, which would have been much better. So, um, you know, they, they almost got it right, but not quite. What else? Then we've got, we've got this type, which is a specialized one, which is actually, um, this one's pretty good. It's nice and long. It's got, um, it's got good support. It can, it can deal with a, a, quite a large range of internal diameters. It even, even has a position where you should line up the, um, the stem clamp to avoid um, you know, having the, the loads in the, in the wrong, you know, along, the, along the gap. So this one uh, is probably my preferred one at the moment. Um, here's another one which has been heavily corroded. So that's the other thing. If you sweat um, on your bike or use your bike on the trainer, the, your sweat can pour down into that and make quite a mess of it. So that's a corroded one. So the other thing to be aware of is if we use this one, and we can show you just how critical the support of, um, of the steer is. So here we'll use a, a headset spacer as an example. So that slides up and down freely, up and down the steerer. Now if I drop that in, and I only need to, I only need to nip it up a little bit, so we'll just give it a little twist. Now, let's see how that gets. There we go. So already the steerer has expanded and that uh, spacer will not slide past that point. So not super tight, so just a little twist and there we go. So that shows you how the steerer does, um, it, it does expand and it does move in that, in that axis. Because there aren't any hoop plies of carbon, and by hoop plies I mean they wrap around um, you know, what we call it 90 degrees, or, or the hoop, and that would contain any, any loads, any crushing type loads. Now typically they don't place much fibre in that because it's very difficult to, to place them without getting voids in it, um, because they, they, won't, um, they won't expand with the pressure of the, of the bladder, they'll clamp off. So there's often not much um, fibre, so they're mainly re relying on plus or minus 45s to take that load, and then the zero um, main loads to take the, the bending loads. So yeah, so that's, a, that, that's quite a, an obvious thing. If, if I can change the shape of the steerer just by tightening that up, that gives you an example of what the stem can do in reverse to crush it. Now we know that carbon has got quite a low elongation, so elongation is the is engineering term for, for stretchiness. It doesn't stretch very much, so typically you're looking at about 2%. So you only need to change the diameter a little bit over 2% and you can start breaking fibres and causing cracks and delamination in, in, in the part. So that's a little bit of a um, a little bit of an example on uh, on the uh, importance of the compression plug, and uh, yeah, a bit of bit of background information. So be mindful of of what compression plug you've got uh, on the bike. Be mindful of the torque that you're clamping your stem. Um, protect it from corrosion. So, you know, if if you are using the bike on the trainer a lot, try and avoid um, getting the sweats going straight into the uh, into that into that junction. 
You can use a corrosion inhibitor like, um, like Bowshield T9. You know, there's others around, but uh, I tend to use the Bowshield stuff. It's just available, uh, readily available, works well. And so, you know, that, that reduces some of those aspects. So, so that's a quick, um, a quick tip. Um, and uh, hope you learned something. And we'll see you again next time. Okay, thanks. Bye. I've got to pick up these um, compression plugs that I've thrown on the floor. <laughs>